Archie, I need just one great tax saving idea. Well, Rob, let me HS say you the way. I'm Archie Hoxton. And I'm Rob Hoxton. And this is Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. Welcome back to the Last Paycheck Podcast. We're your hosts, certified financial planners, Archie Hoxton and Rob Hoxton. And today, we're talking about the king of tax-advantaged accounts. That's right, the HSA, the health savings account. You know, when most people talk about tax-advantaged accounts... That sounded so nerdy, I, I tell you. I mean, that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we are financial planning nerds, so that should be expected, right? Yeah, well, I happen to be a big fan of HSAs, so... <laughs> um, so when most people think about health savings accounts, they think about traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, the list goes on. This one doesn't come up very often, uh, frankly. I think it's a, a little known account, but it, it packs a, a tax punch that is far and away more potent than any of those other kinds of accounts. Well, it's really the only one like it that is triple tax-free, right? Right. You can't get that in any other account. Um, and it's partly because there's an incentive in place for uh, folks who want to have some money saved aside for health costs, right? It's the health savings account. So it's it, it's not a general retirement account. However, we'll, t- we'll discuss later, it, it, it does take on characteristics of a retirement account later. But um, so Rob, what... If someone were to ask you, what's an HSA, how would you respond? Uh, it, is, it stands for health savings account. Uh, and certain people who have high deductible medical insurance plans can uh, open a health savings account. Usually when you do it through your employer, the money that you're contributing or that your employer is contributing to your health savings account actually just goes in a savings account. Oftentimes, they'll issue uh, like a little debit card, looks like a credit card. And the expectation is that whenever you go to the doctor, if you have a copay or something like that or a visit, you know, charge that you're going to hand them that card and you're going to use that money that you saved in the health savings account to actually pay for some unreimbursed medical expense, right? That's the way it's been pitched. That's the way it is designed to work. But there's sort of an off-label, to use a prescription term, there's an off-label use for these things, which makes it really powerful. Right. Because one thing that is left out of the conversation is oftentimes that you don't have to use your HSA funds, and you can actually invest it into typically, you know, mutual funds, exchange-traded funds, uh, and, and various other investment Yeah, funds. some good index fund, like maybe the S&P 500 or something. Right. And then you just, you can actually, you can just let it sit and grow. And, and that's something that isn't often talked about. So a little bit on why you might do that, right? So you have... When you, when you go to the to check out, you've just been to urgent care and you've got to pay a little fee for the visit, you've got two options. You can use that debit card for your, for your HSA and use money that was not taxed on its way in and it won't be taxed on its way out. You've never paid taxes on those earnings. Or you can use money that you've paid taxes on the earnings, right, just from your debit your regular debit card or your credit, or credit card. card or cash or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so, and what you're doing is now, if that money is invested or earning interest of any kind, it's now growing tax-free forever. Um, and so there's, there's an advantage to just letting that kind of sit there and accumulate rather than, than spending it. Now in a pinch, you know, you may need to, it's but- not that it's, Let's sort of, let's, to make it real, let's sort of paint the picture of, of a person who might do this. So, um, so like in, in our little business, Hoxton Planning and Management, we have uh, health insurance for our employees and for us, uh, the owners. And um, we can choose as an employee whether we want like a traditional lower deductible uh, insurance plan 
or we can opt for a higher deductible um, plan that allows us to also have a health savings account. So the higher deductible plans, these, in order to have a health savings account, there's some limits, right? So the, if you're a single participant, you have to have a deductible that's at least $1,500 a year. Right. If you're a family, $3,000 a year. That's in, in this year for 2023. Um, as a single person, if you have that, you can put, what is it, $3,850 into the HSA account. If you're a family, it's $7,750. So that money is then in that, that account. If you can afford to pay your out-of-pocket medical expenses and allow that money to stay in the account, be invested possibly, um, and get compounding interest without paying taxes, it becomes a hugely powerful thing. Right. Now, not everybody can do that. You know, usually uh, people who have, will have these plans oftentimes will be younger employees. Um, and maybe they can't really afford to, to pay for their medical, unreimbursed medical expenses out of, out of their pocket instead of from the HSA account. But that's the kind of scenario where it makes a lot of sense. Um, right. Yeah. When it, in a, a scenario where it might not make sense, <clears throat> if you're expecting that you're going to have a lot of medical bills and you don't have a whole lot of free cash flow, it might still make more sense not to have the high deductible plan and to forego the HSA. And maybe one time, you know, down the road when open enrollment comes along, you can reevaluate and talk to your employer or, you know, go out into the marketplace and look at options. Um, you know, with the high deductible plan, you're, you're, you're paying less from the premium and you're getting the HSA, which is a nice benefit. But if, if you've got a lot of medical expenses, it's going to take you a lot longer to hit your out-of-pocket maximum, and you're going to pay more out-of-pocket. So you got to weigh your options, look at your health situation, look at how much you're spending, how much you're billing the insurance. So, so if you're super healthy and you've got enough income so that you can allow those funds that are in the HSA account that you put in each year, to, if you can allow those to continue to grow, this is a perfect scenario. Let's fast forward and talk about what happens after, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years of contributing to an HSA and what your, what your life and your retirement might look like, how it might change. So if you've been contributing and you've been, you've been getting the tax benefit up front every time you contribute, saving taxes that year, you can use that for qualified medical expenses at any time and you don't pay taxes, and you don't have a penalty. If you were to use that on something else, you pay taxes and you pay penalty. Like right? if, you're gonna, if you use it to buy that boat. Right. Yep, you're going to pay a penalty. If right. you're under 65, if you're over 65, you're just going to pay taxes, right? Right. If, and, and the penalty is actually steeper than like an IRA, it's actually a 20% penalty, whereas an IRA is only a 10% penalty if you're under 59 and a Good half. Good point, yep. So if you're like, I want to buy a boat, I'm going to take the penalty, don't use the HSA. Well, you know, the thing is, is that if you're inclined to buy a boat, you're probably inclined to make other financial mistakes, right? <laughs> like take from your HSA, so. Yeah, um, so just watch out for that penalty. It is a little steeper, and it, it doesn't go away as early. So. Oh, meaning that with the IRA, that penalty goes away at 59 and a half. Right. Whereas this is age 65. Right. So after age 65, the penalty goes away. And so for medical expenses, qualified medical expenses, you can, you can take money out and you can spend it on the medical expense and you won't pay taxes. However, at age, after age 65... Let's say you don't have as many medical expenses, and you, you, but you need money. You could still take money out and spend it on anything. You pay taxes. You don't have the penalty. So it almost, it almost becomes kind of like a traditional IRA in a way. So it, it's, it's a backup IRA account in, in some way. So it's a really cool supplement to your retirement plan, given that most people, when they're retired, 
at some point your medical expenses go up so significantly. So just last night I was doing a, a financial plan update meeting with a client. He's 54 years old, super healthy. Uh, his employer offers an H, you know, high deductible plan with an HSA as an option. He's got, you know, the low deductible traditional plan with a $250 individual uh, deductible. And I was, and, and he's super healthy. I mean, he, he had run a marathon the weekend before, <laughs> right? So super healthy guy, 54 years old. He's got like 11 years before he plans to stop working and is looking for ways to accumulate more funds. He's, his kids are educated, out of the house. He's got excess income. I'm like, listen, you need to switch your health insurance plan, get the HSA account, once you have funds in the HSA account, choose the investment option instead of the savings option. I said, I can help you do it. Um, and, and then simply keep adding to it, allow it to grow. And then when you get to retirement age, you'll have this, this money that you, you took a tax deduction putting it in, you had tax deferred growth. And then you can use the money without paying taxes as long as they're qualified health ex medical expenses. And he's like, but yeah, I'm healthy. I mean, how much am I going to spend on qualified medical expenses? Isn't that sort of limiting? Well, I can tell you this. As we get older, we have medical expenses. And there are a lot of things that you can pay that might not come to mind once right. you're 65, right? It might not have to do with a, an existing health problem that you have to go to the emergency room for or go see some specialist. Yep. It could be something that a healthy person would spend. Right. And, and, and you can spend money on things that might not have been covered by your traditional health insurance. Like, it comes to mind, like, I wear glasses, so eye care, glasses. That's a qualified medical expense. Hearing aids, qualified medical expense. Medicare premium, qualified medical expense. Long-term care insurance premium, qualified medical expense. And insurance that's not a qualified medical expense is Medicare supplement. You can't use your HSA money on a tax-free basis to pay your Medicare supplement insurance. But there's a variety of things. Uh, you can, you know, weight loss or supplements, as long as they're prescribed by a physician, are eligible. So there are a lot of things that you can use that money for. And if you don't use it, you just pay taxes when you take it out, no penalty. Just like you would with a traditional IRA, right? You wouldn't not save in a traditional IRA because you're going to pay taxes when you draw it out. Um, it's the same principle for the HSA. So I'm going to comment on one thing, and then I want you to tell us about this really cool little loophole <laughs> that is like a, made, my, made our heads as, as financial planning nerds go. <laughs> anyway, so um, you can contribute to your HSA account up until you get six months away from filing for Medicare. Remember, Medicare, when you apply for Medicare, it's, the coverage is retroactive six months. So you, you need to keep in mind that you need to stop funding your HSA six months ahead. Right. All right. So I built it up, Archie. What is this mind-blowing loophole that makes this even better? Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really awesome. And the way that it works is, and it's, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just keep it simple. You can take money from your traditional IRA no more than the maximum contr allowable contribution to an HSA. So again, that's, that's 3850, 3850 for a single person who has single coverage and 7750 for someone who has family coverage. So you can take that and put it into, from your traditional IRA, put it into your uh, HSA, and it's a rollover. So what you're doing is you're taking money that is destined to be taxed again at some point, whether when you pull it out after 59 and a half or when you're required to, right now at age 73, out of your traditional IRA, and put it somewhere it will never be taxed again. And that if you, if you still need to use it like a traditional IRA, you can after 65. But uh, however, you can only do this once. Was, let me say it first. <laughs> Just when you were thinking, what was the government thinking? Oh my gosh, the government's lost its mind. 
they're going to let us take money from an IRA and put it in an HSA where it never gets taxed. The catch is, is that you can only do it once. <laughs> Yeah. And so obviously it's a limited amount of money, but don't miss out on that opportunity if you have an HSA account. Or let's say you have an unexpected medical expense um, and you have an IRA, but you don't have you know tax savings. You wouldn't be able to access the funds in your IRA if you're under 59 and a half without a penalty. You could, if you were in a pinch, you could, you could roll that money over into your HSA Therefore, accessing your, your IRA, your retirement funds for this medical necessity without a penalty and without paying taxes. So that's another, if you're in a pinch, that's another great thing to do. Now, you're not getting the compounding benefit, but it's still better than taking the penalty on your IRA. Right. You right. have after-tax cash flow. So before we run out of time, I just want to talk about what happens if you die with one of these. Sure. Right? So it's going to happen to all of us, right? If we... Plan well, we'll have money left over in most of our account types. Uh, and if you have money left over in your HSA, if your spouse is your named beneficiary, then she just she or he will just assume that HSA account, it'll work just as if it, were, if, if it had been theirs from the beginning. If you um, have a non-spouse beneficiary, then the, f- the account will be liquidated. They'll receive the cash and pay taxes as ordinary income at their tax bracket. And if there is no beneficiary named, then it'll be t- taxed as ordinary income to the estate, to your estate. So uh, this does not enjoy the same sort of beneficiary uh, tax benefits that, say, an IRA does which allows for you to stretch out the distributions to a beneficiary over time. So uh, speaking of time, that's about all we've got. Yeah. So if you want to learn more, we are including in the description a list of qualified medical expenses that that you can pull from your HSA for. It's in the description. It's from the IRS uh, website. But if you have more questions, please leave us a comment. As always, uh, we'll get back to you or make an episode out out of the comment. Um, like, subscribe, share with your friends and family, and uh, we hope to see you back next time. You've been watching Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. If you like this show, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Last Paycheck is available anywhere you get your podcasts.